Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Really excited to do another rainbow soap because I haven't done one in a long time. And now I have a good reason to experiment with it because I've been playing around with that concentric circle pour idea. And I'm thinking if I put a ring of yellow around the outside edge of the bowl and then go in with the orange on the inner side of that circle and so on until I reach the middle, it would be really kind of interesting to see how the colors spread out in the final cut bars. And actually, I'll be able to learn what this concentric circle pour is actually doing. For example, I'll be able to see by looking at the bars just exactly what happened to the outer ring of yellow uh, as it translates into the bars of soap and so on. So I'm really curious about that and um, really have to look at my recipe and how long I blend, all that, that kind of thing, because the more colors you have, the longer it's going to take for you to get all that soap into the mold and you risk it you know, hardening up. So I'm going to be careful about that. And I can do that by adding more liquid oils to my recipe and working pretty quickly and not over blending, all those kinds of things. And also making sure that I have a fragrance that doesn't accelerate the soap. And I'm using the fragrance Angel Heart and I got mine at uh, Rustic Essentials. It's a kind of perfumey scent, which I usually don't like, but oh my gosh, it's such a nice scent that I thought it would be perfect for the soap. And that's why I am naming the soap Angel's Rainbow. So, so let's get on with the color tutorial first, if you want to see it in the information area by hitting that eye icon. Um, I'm going to be talking about why rainbow colors work, even though it's like every color under the sun. Why does that work without it being so um, clashy and all that? So if you want to see that, hit that eye and let's get on with the soap making. Okay, I've got all my oils, Kaylin Clay. And my shea butter in here. It's ready for a good blend. And again, I like to blend this as much as I can just to get all those little micro particles all blended up before I get the lye in there. Because once you get the lye in there, if you over blend, then it's going to accelerate. And I'm soaping at about 73 degrees today. That's my oils and my lye solution. Let's get the lye in there. And I've got silk back in here again. I just want to get this emulsified. And get my fragrance in here. This is Angel Heart from Rustic Essentials. It's very hmm, expensive smelling. And it, notice how dark it is, but I've noticed in my last batch that this does not end up discoloring very much after you get the colors in there, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, that's gonna be good enough for me. Actually, there's a little bit more oil on top. So I want to do this without making too much of a mess. I'm going to use a ladle and I'm going to just use a little bit of all of the rainbow colors starting with my lightest yellow. I'm going to fill these about three quarters full and I'm only going to mix them when I'm ready to pour them with a whisk so that they stay as liquid as possible. This is going to be a messy day. I don't often use disposable cups. I used to the, um, use things that I can use over and over again, but with six different colors, I really don't want the up. Okay, the rest of this batch is going to be with white. So, I already have my titanium dioxide mixed up. I'm 
let's get that blended. It's cream right now, but by the time it saponifies, it's going to be uh, off-white. That is good. <laughs> Done with the blender. Let's just get the bubbles out of here. Staying nice and liquid. Getting rid of a few bubbles. Get my lazy, lazy Susan in there. And I'm going to pour about half of this in there. It's about half. And I'm going to take my little mini whisk. And get the colors combined. And the colors, the micas, have already been combined with some batch oil and that's so that I don't have to really blend the powder until it's all liquefied. So that'll keep things liquid too. But I do want to make sure these are well mixed. So again this is the return to the concentric per circle pour and I'm going to just get this on the outside you might not even see it but it's right there on the outside of this oh good it didn't sink in too much there's a little bit left over I can dabble that on the top then I'll go to my orange And I'll make a ring right on the inside of that. Next thread. If you've never smelled this angel heart fragrance, it's very sophisticated. It's a perfumey like smell which I don't usually like, but in this case, I really love it. So there's my red ring. Let's get to the purple. I'm pouring from a little higher up now. because I have just as much batter of each of these colors, but notice that the rings are getting smaller. So what I want to happen is I want those colors to go deeper in the soap. And do I know what this is going to look like? And the answer is I don't. But that's why I like doing this. I like the surprise of how new things end up looking like when you cut the bars. So this one from high up. And lastly the green is just going to be poured from high up and go right in the middle. Doesn't that look nice? And I've got all the rest of this batter and this is what's going to break up the concentric circles a little bit but I'm just going to count on like a drop swirl kind of thing happening
and I have some of this left over. I'm not going to do any mixing. I'm just going to pour this in. Should be a nice show right now for us. Interesting how those, you can trace the colors where they're coming from and that outside area ended up showing up a lot on top, but that means that a lot of the other colors are hidden below. What I'm hoping for is like a prismatic effect. I'm just really happy that I got everything poured before it became unpourable. Get the rest of the white in there. I really want to cover most of that color on top. I was looking for these little silicon spatulas. I'm trying to get these leftover colors somewhat in a stripe so that every bar has some. And this way we don't waste any of the colors. And it's going to show them off really nicely on top. Followed by this orange. This is not exactly a micro drizzle as far as how you've um, how we've done this before together here on Blackburn Soap because this actually has soap mixed into it. Let's get the red. not quite enough to pour in a nice neat line but that's what's going to make this look a little different anyway purple blue I really haven't done a rainbow type soap in a long time, so... Here we go. And finally the green. Clean up the sides with my chopstick. I could leave that just as it is, but... It's a little bit too random, so I'm going to swirl, maybe some tight, really close together swirls. This shows off the color a little better because it drags it. I have to see, do I want it like that or do I want to swirl it a little more? I don't usually swirl more, so I'm going to do that for a change. I'm going to do that down the length of the mold. Yeah, I'm glad I did that.
And this one's just really crying out for glitter. So let's get that on there. And I say that because uh, this glitter is very reflective and so you're going to see the color reflected all over it. So just a little bit. Make that sparkle happen. And that's it. Let's give you a closer look and then bring you back for the cut. Well, I really couldn't wait to cut into this one just because there's so many different cool things going on. Number one, that there's seven total colors, the rainbow colors plus an off-white, but also because of the way I poured it. And you'll be able to tell what portion of the ring that I poured went where in the soap. So, Oh, that's really quite wonderful. It's almost all a veining of colors. And remember, there was a lot of white in this particular bag. So just different um, little bits of color in proportion to the base of the whole soap. I'm going to be interested in what happens closer to the center of the loaf. Cool. I like the distribution of all the color. Remember the green was in the center of the pour and then it ended up being this ring on the bottom. The yellow, not the yellow, the yellow was on the outside ring. Pretty interesting. It's a good way to learn what happens in these pours since you know where you poured the different colors in the pot. There's a veining of all the colors there. That's really pretty on the side there. This one's on one side. And the fragrance, I just can't stop smelling it. I'm not a perfumey kind of guy at all, but this Angel Heart fragrance is just very, it's a great fragrance. We're getting closer to the center. There's the top. Really interesting. I like it. And I like it mainly because it's so different of a different quality of swirl types. It's like coral, if you put it this way. It's a good thing to remember. Now we're getting into more of the the blue and the green, and when they combine, they form this beautiful turquoise-like color right in there. That is pretty amazing. Wow. I kind of feel like I'm finally getting some bang for the buck with uh, playing around with this concentric circle pour, but that's to be expected. It takes a lot of experimenting and saying, what if I did this differently? Look at that one. It's my favorite one so far. Oh my goodness, love that. Definitely worth doing again. Wow. Okay, and my last cut. Thank you everybody for watching especially those of you who have been really interested in how this concentric circle pour has been working out. Thank you for your subscriptions and all your kind words, comments, all that. And um, some of you are tapping into my Instagram where I share a lot of my inspiration shots from 
travel and flowers and dogs and all kinds of things that make me happy and and that probably inspiring a lot of my soaps as I hang on to it in my brain. So thank you for watching again and we'll see what I'm up to next week. I have no idea this time. See you all later. Bye.